Okay, so now the rest of the questions, we came all the way up to question number number five, I suppose, right? Now, question number six, a machine on an, on an average manufactures 2,825 screws a day. On average, basically two, so many screws a day. How many screws did it produce in the month of January 2006? Now, to solve this problem, you need to know essentially how many months, essentially the different months of the year, they have a certain number of days, meaning that some months have, I don't know, 28 days, 30 days, 31 days, and so on and so forth, right? And in order to make sure that we are not doing anything wrong, you can ask Google the number of days in January the number of days so January 31 days as you can see for example February so 28 days 29 days in a leap year March 31 days and so on so January has essentially generally has 31 days right So then essentially if the machine on an average produces 2825 screws in a day then how many screws did it produce in the month of January 2006 so then you can say that essentially the number of screws that and of course you have to if it's for the sake of an examination you have to of course you already know that so you have to write things neatly and cleanly and everything for example you would write the number of basically screws uh, uh, the number of screws produced on january 2006 was for example uh, 31 times for example 2825 which is then you would calculate this and the, the unit would be screws and of course then then it's better to write for example that uh, making the assumption that that for example that 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 essentially january has 31 days essentially and so on and so forth right so this is simple. meaning that um in this case you would use multiplication right and that's essentially something about multiplication that is that 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 that's that that is important to know you see january 2000 essentially the month of january 2006 for example this month has 31 days right so 31 days so that means that this is the first day second day third fourth fifth four fifth sixth seventh and so on and so forth all the way up to 31st day right and this is the first day now on this day basically the number of screws um the number of screws produced on an average is 2825 right on this day then again on the next day the number of screws is 2825 then again on this day the number of screws is 2825 right meaning essentially you can make the assumption that on every that on any given day the number of screws is 2825 because this is an average okay now so essentially what I need to do in order to calculate the total number of screws starting from the first day all the way up to the 31st day is it would be come essentially would be not easy to calculate meaning that I have to write 2825 for the first day then 2825 for the second day and 2825 for the third day and you just i need i would just need to keep going all the way up to 2225 for the 31st day right and then i would have to add all of these together and then essentially keep adding all the 
basically 31 numbers together to get it to get to the sum right so of course this would be this would take a whole lot of time <coughs> now multiplication is essentially nothing but a shortcut for addition meaning that instead of writing for example 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 five times instead of writing this five times which would be for example 3 plus 3 is 6 that is 6 that then this is for example a 12 and 12 plus 3 is equal to 15 right so then I can I can simply say that 5 times essentially 3 times 5 because that's 5 times that's essentially nothing but 15 and of course as long as you know your multiplication table and as long as you know that the algorithm for essentially for multiplication then you're good to go then you can add essentially 3 to itself as many times as you want like for example even a 15 million times basically right so essentially multiplication is is essentially multiplication is essentially shortcut for addition instead of adding things together repeatedly over and over again you can multiply them right and then in the exact same way essentially um, in the exact same way basic the uh, division is a shortcut for basically for subtraction right so what i mean by that is that suppose that the problem is given to you in the following way suppose that for example you have i don't know for example 31 31 marbles you have 31 marbles and essentially the exact same way i mean the exact same june 2006 for example excuse me january 2006 which has 31 days and suppose that by whatever agreement essentially on the first day you have 31 marbles on the second essentially and on every consecutive day essentially on every on every consecutive day you take one marble away which means that you take one marble on on the first day which means that on the on the second day you will end up with you you will have 30 marbles in a bag for example again on this day you take one marble away you have for example 29 marbles and you keep going until the until the 31st day now you want to know suppose that this is the problem and you want to know how many marbles you're you're left with on the 31st day and let, let's make it for example let's just make it 31 okay so then since i have 30 31 marbles here and i take one away i have to subtract right so i have to write 31 minus 1 and then again minus 1 and then again minus 1 and then all the way essentially 31 times and then i have to keep subtracting 31 times and i will end up with zero marbles right either zero marbles of course right so but then this this operation over here would be a tedious oper op uh, operation and of course if it was not 31 but for example let's say a thousand a thousand two hundred a thousand one 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 hundred thirty thousand times for example then you would have to do the subtraction 130,000 times which is not possible of course it's possible it takes a whole lifetime probably so then so then in order to do this this operation in just very easily what you can do is that you can meaning that the operation essentially this operation becomes 31 minus 1 is equal to 30 then you're left with 30 marbles take one away you have 29 marbles then you have 29 take one away you have 28 marbles 
and you just keep going with this until you have uh, one marble one and you take one away you will end up with zero marbles right so this you do 31 times right now uh, basically what happens here this operation that you have to do 31 times you can write it as 31 divided which is this 31 over here divided by 31 which is the, this 31 over here and that would be essentially um, that would be essentially 31 excuse me this operation would be um, would be essentially 31 which is which is this 31 here and if if you divide it by one meaning every every time you take essentially one away that would be essentially a 31 which is this 31 over here and then 31 times one is 31 if you subtract you will have a zero which is this zero over here right so instead of doing this tedious operation of subtraction you can simply divide so essentially what this means is that addition and multiplication are interrelated and basically subtraction and and division are interrelated and of course there is there's of course relationships between addition and subtraction meaning subtraction and addition are inverse processes right meaning that if you um, if you for example if you add one marble to your marbles and if you subtract one then you will end up with the same number of marbles or essentially then there is the same the same type of relationship between multiplication and division they are inverse processes meaning that if you have some number for example 5 multiplied by 5 you'll get a 25 divided by 5 you'll get a 5 the same number you'll get back okay so these are interesting things about numbers and um, and I just wanted to point out the relationship between essentially addition and multiplication and subtraction and division and then of course the, 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 the relationships that there are between um, between addition and subtraction and then between multiplication and division as well okay so that is basically another question here now the next question is question number seven which is a merchant had seven eight thousand five hundred ninety two rupees with her she placed an order for purchasing 40 radio sets at 1200 rupees each meaning each of the radio sets cost uh, basically 1200 rupees and she had so much money seven eight thousand five hundred ninety two rupees how much money will remain with her after the purchase okay so the amount of money that she had so the amount of money that she had was rupees was rupees seventy eight thousand five hundred ninety two right and she placed for the radio sets for the radio sets at rupees twelve hundred each so now you want to know the balance meaning the amount of money that remained after she made the purchase so essentially if you buy 40 radio sets at 1200 rupees each the, the amount of money that you spend on on these radios would be so essentially the amount spent would be 12 times because each costs 1200 rupees so then 12, 40 of them would be excuse me that's that's of course supposed to be a four so then 40 of them would cost 40 times rupees 1200 which is the same thing as 4 times is equal to 48 
that's a 48 and then you have um, three zeros that's 48,000 rupees right and so the amount of money that she had was so much essentially that was 78,592 so you can write essentially 78,592 and subtract from that rupees basically 48,000 and subtract and essentially the answer is 2 minus 0 is equal to 0, 9 minus 0 is equal to 9, 5 minus 0 is equal to 5, 8 minus 8 is equal to 0, 7 minus 4 is equal to 3. So that is in rupees because this is in rupees and this is in rupees. So then essentially that is the amount left after, after the purchase. After the purchase so that's that's the amount of money that remains <clears throat> the next question that we have is a student multiplied this number by this number 72 7236 by 65 instead of multiplying by 56 so instead of he essentially did this the student let's call him a she so she multiplied uh, let's call her a she of course she multiplied 7236 by 65 instead of 56 meaning she was supposed to multiply this number by 56 but then by mistake she multiplied by 65 right by how much was this answer greater than the correct answer the correct answer was that was if she had multiplied this number by 56, not by 65, but then she multiplied by 65. Now you want to know essentially what is the difference between the answer that she got and the correct answer that she would have gotten if, you, if she'd done the, the, the operation properly, right? Now in order to solve this problem, so essentially you would you might you might essentially say that so the number is essentially this is number eight so you might say that the student was essentially the number was 7236 and she was supposed to multiply it by 56 that is the correct answer but then she multiplied by 65 which is the wrong answer and she did actually this one right so then what i could do i mean to 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 know the difference between the, the wrong answer and, and the correct answer i could say that for example 72,236 times 65 which she did you would get some answer over here and then she was supposed to write 7,236 times uh, basically a 56 and then she would get some answer over here let's call this a let's call this b right now of course a is greater than b because you're multiplying this the, the same number essentially and here the number is larger than this number so of course the answer over here would be larger than meaning a would be larger than b right then you could then because a is larger than b then i could write a minus b that would be essentially the difference that i'm looking for right but then this method essentially needs you to do a whole lot of calculation meaning you have to first do this multiplication and then do this multiplication and then subtract right now there is another way to solve the same problem and what you could do is simple what you could do is that essentially you have you 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 have this number over here 7236 if you multiply it by if you multiply it by um, by 65 you'll get some answer if you multiply it by 56 you'll get some other answer but then what is going to be the difference between the two answers and this you could you could answer using the 
using essentially the knowledge that we have from for example the previous question that there is this relationship between multiplication and uh, addition and then there is there is the relationship between subtraction and addition so you could you could answer it that way <coughs> and this you could i mean we could also argue that uh, that basically that 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 for example let's say i have a two right and if i multiply it by one i'll get a two if i multiply a two by the two by a two i'll get a four if i multiply the two by a three i'll get a six if i multiply the two by by a four i'll get a an eight if i multiply two by by five i'll get a ten and so on and so forth so you see this the difference between between essentially these numbers is just 2 plus 2 is a 4 4 plus 2 is a 6 4 plus 2 is, is, is a 6 6 plus 2 is an 8 8 plus 2 is a 10 so the difference between these numbers is always a 2 and that's because of this 2 over here right because you're multiplying 2's by these different numbers and and these numbers are incremented by one meaning every time you increase the number by essentially by one so you have a one you have a two you have a three you have a four you have a five meaning that essentially one plus a one is a two two plus a one is a three three plus a one is a four and four plus a one is a five so these numbers are incremented by one the two remains the same and then and then essentially over here as you can see over here the difference between these these numbers are being incremented by the same two meaning two plus two is a four four plus two is a six six plus two is an eight eight plus two is a ten right so now what this means is that essentially this operation that 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 we have done over here this operation that we have done over here 2 plus 1 2 times 1 is just essentially what that means is that you have a 2 but then meaning that you can think think of this as for example a 2 times 2 you could think of it as 2 plus 2 2 times 2 times over here right this over here 2 times 3 you can think of it as 2 plus 2 plus 2 meaning 3 times this operation over here you can think of it as 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 4 times right so that means that essentially every time that you that you essentially that you increase this number by a 1 another factor of 2 is being added to the to the sum right so now we can use essentially what we learned here in order to answer this question in this question essentially what we have is that the number that we have is 7236 which you, which you can think of as this 2 over here and then you multiply it by 56 and the 56 you can think of think of it as one of these numbers over here and then by 65 so that the number has been incremented by essentially 56 and 66 that would be essentially 10 difference but then this is 9 the, the, the difference between 56 and 65 the difference is 9 right so that means that essentially this number has been incremented by 9 so mean, meaning that 56 plus a 9 is the same thing as 6 9, 9 plus 6 0 to 15 1 that's a 65 which is this number so that's plus a nine right and so that means that essentially when you get to when whatever the the number was over here essentially if you incremented if you essentially um when you get to 65 another nine factors of the same number has been added to the sum right 
So which means that essentially the difference between the answer over here and the answer over here is nine times this number, right? So now if I actually do the calculation over here, that essentially I should get 7,236 times a nine. That gives me nine, nine times six is uh, 54, five remains. 9 times 6 is equal to 27. 27 plus 5 is uh, 32. 27 plus time is 32. So we have a 3 remain, essentially 3 over here. 9 times 6 is equal to 18 plus 3 is equal to 21. 2 remains. 9 times 7 is equal to uh, 9 times 7 is the same as um, 63. 65 so the difference must be 65 124 right so let me do this calculation here that's 7 2 3, 6 times times and 9 is 65 124 right so the difference must be this so i write this number over here 65 124 that's essentially the, the difference, right? And then basically what happens, and, then, and now let's, let's actually do the calculation and check. So I have 7,236 7, times a 56. That's the same thing as 7,236 times a 56 is the same as 405,216. And then times a 65, 7236 times a 65 is it essentially is the same as 470340. That's a 7236 times a 65. Okay. Now, if I take the difference between these two numbers, you see that essentially 470340. Minus 405, 216, that's a different, that's, that's essentially, if I borrow 1 from you, this becomes 3, this becomes a 10, so 10 minus 6 is equal to 4, 3 minus 1 is equal to 2, 3 minus 2 is equal to 1, and then borrow 1 from here, this becomes a 6, this becomes a 10, 10 minus 5 is equal to 5, 6 minus 0 is equal to 0, and then 6, 5, 1, 2, 4. 65124. So that's exactly the number that we came up with. <clears throat> so if you use essentially your logic, um, if you use your logic with essentially of the log your logic as to how essentially these numbers are logically constructed, then of course you can simply calculate the problem with just one multiplication and uh, you don't have to go through all of the all of the calculation that 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 like here like essentially for example multiplying once and then multiplying for a second time and then doing doing the subtraction so you don't have to go through that right so this was question this was question number eight in the next video we will do the rest of the questions thank you